Hey guys, Yu Sheng here. Welcome to another StarCraft 2 video. In this replay, we're going to be playing against a Protoss player. This is actually some custom game practice I was doing the other day. And this is more of a, an entertaining game <laughs> rather than a, a lesson, I guess we can say. Um, a lot of things go wrong in the early game, but it gets pretty tight. And uh, yeah, it's a very exciting game. So I'm not playing the safe TVP build order. I'm actually going to be playing a mind drop, which is not something I play too often these days. But it is a pretty standard and solid aggressive build if you want to play something like this. The best part of it is it's going to give you some scouting info. So when you play the safe TVP build order, you're safe against everything, but you don't really know what's coming. Whereas when you play this build order, you can you know, see which tech they've chosen. And, you know, that can be helpful uh, for kind of preparing yourself in advance. Now, my opponent's playing Twilight here. I don't know that just yet. But it's not a huge deal, honestly. I saw a couple questions in the, the YouTube chat, like, you know, why go Reaper instead of Marine? What's the advantage, disadvantage? Basically, the Reaper is going to give you a lot more info, but it can be harder to defend this Adept. Like you can see here, three Marines, it's uh, very easy to push this back. We can even chase him <laughs> down the side of the map. Whereas if you go Reaper, it can be a little more tricky. You're going to need a bunker. Um, you're going to need to kite the Adept if you want to kill it. So it's a lot more time consuming. I think in some ways the Reaper is easier for beginners, but... If you have to micro while doing this build, that can be quite challenging. So, overall, I think the Marine is easier, but yeah, it doesn't give you as much scouting. So, Command center upgrade. can be a little annoying. Now, normally, if you want to do this mine drop safely, you can actually cut Marines quite a bit earlier than I have. But what I wanted to do here. It's actually a pretty risky idea <laughs> is to push with the Marines and the Widowmine drop at the same time and just create a lot of chaos. But this is definitely a very risky build. Like if he was going for like a four gate blink stalker, I'd be completely screwed. So it's not something uh, you should use very often. And it might be even, even be a little bit more sound if I was checking to make sure Protest got their third base. That's kind of a prerequisite for this working. Additional supply depots required. And behind this, we're going to go for a Raven. We're going to go for three racks. And we're going to set up for a nice 3 1 1 push. That's the plan. Somebody, get me out of this mess. So we get these mines off. And it's a little bit easier for me to micro because the stalkers kind of need to be kiting as they fight. Whereas I can kind of just A move. However, he did a really good job. I don't actually think he took very much damage at all here, which is actually quite impressive. This is a pretty hard defense. So kudos to him. And he does snipe that medevac as well, so a <laughs> really, really bad start, obviously. But we are going to set up for that 3-1-1 push, or stims on the way, plus ones on the way. And I should be going Widow Mine here, because I saw uh, three gases. So this is actually a bit of a mistake right now, again, is going into the uh, tank play. So, I did swap that over, actually. Realizing my mistake. <laughs> but, uh, ideally, we'd be making Widow Mines, like, right now. Research. Since he's playing a very charge lot heavy style. And if you watch the powering guide, you can see I'm setting up for a 
super strong timing here. Not making SCVs. Pretty much an all in. Base is under attack. And he gets a Debo, but nothing huge. I put my eBay here, which might seem a little bit risky. That he could snipe the plus one, but the building has quite a bit of health, so it's. You have a lot of time to uh, repair that with the SCVs. And the benefit is you can save a depot, so you're a little bit more safe against something like a DT play. So a bit of a trade-off, but uh, I think it's strong. So what we're going to do here is just scan him, make sure that it's actually safe to push. And what I should be doing is getting one or two more marines out of the map, just to give me give myself a little bit more vision. So we see that he has the third base, we see the other gases. So we should be able to push here, but we did sacrifice a lot of marines earlier. So we don't quite have as much army as I would normally have. And he's also playing pretty gateway heavy, so he has quite a bit of units here. Um, I, I probably could have still pushed this, to be honest. I think I'm underestimating my army just a little bit. But, yeah, I shot the Raven, and so it didn't feel like I could do anything here. But, yeah, that was actually kind of a problem in this game, because now I'm quite behind. So, from here, it's, it's going to be difficult. So things are looking pretty bad. <laughs> it comes in with a drop as well. So we are in a ton of trouble, but we're going to see what we can do. I set up a nice little drop here. And ideally we'd be looking at the drop to make sure it's safe, but um, we're already dealing with so many things at once that it was a little bit better if we just focus on uh, the important things. So I think overall we're trading pretty good right now, but those the Zealots at home are completely decimating our mineral line. And you can see that the, the Zealots in the natural mineral line, I didn't have um, anything going after them. But it's actually like a good thing that I'm trying not to watch these units at home because there's too many things to do to actually babysit everything. So next time what I would do is like, a shift command to the natural so that it gets dealt with without me spending a lot of attention. Because there's just too many things to do. You can see even he's getting a little bit overpressed here. Now looking at our situation, we're uh, behind in supply, which is really bad if you're playing the Terran side of TVP. You kind of want to be up like 20, 30 supply. So our position is pretty rough. He also has a third base stun, so <laughs> things are looking quite bad. But, I did kill a bunch of pylons here. So, it's going to be hard for him to spend his money in this period, because his gates are not online. Um, and he's also going to have to spend a lot of attention to, uh, to deal with that. So, he's pretty taxed right now in terms of uh, tasks to do. So, I'm going to put out some pressure here and just see what we can get done. Maybe uh, kill some probes or something. He's actually so distracted that he's out of position here. So we get to snipe this base. Um, and this is actually a huge play to coming back in the game. So we're starting to even it up. One of the common things I uh, find less experienced players doing is when they're behind... They feel uncomfortable and they decide to just end the game as fast as they can. Um, but this is actually the worst approach. If you're ever like losing a game, what you actually want to do is make the game last as long as possible. So even though we're in a pretty bad position here, the goal is to play this out for like 20 minutes. <laughs> and the longer the game goes, the more likely we are to win. 
especially now when our uh, <clears throat> medevac energy is quite low. There's not really too much we can do, so I'm playing pretty defensive. I'm actually a little worried here because if he does push us, it uh, it might be quite difficult to hold. So I'm trying to keep a nice spread. But now that our units are healing up, we're starting to get a, you know, a little bit of a Viking count. We're not feeling as worried. So we're going to start taking a little bit more map control. Getting our four set up. And eventually the idea is just to get into a composition that's fairly decent, but also at max supply. So the reason you want to drag out games is because if you're in the mid game and you try to end the game, their advantages matter more than when you're uh, max supply. So the later the game goes, the less their earlier advantage mattered. So if we can just get to max supply here with, you know, the spellcasters we need to fight his army, then we definitely have a really good shot at still winning this game. So I'm adding in the ghost and some vikings and he actually attacks here and catches me off guard so this is like a terrible start to a fight um, but luckily we get some of the disruptors uh, at the beginning there and we have just enough, enough bio that it's not too bad but honestly if we took this fight much better we might have been able to just you know win the game right here actually. He wasn't really developing his army as much as he should be, so that's why we were able to win that fight. You can see he's floating uh, a little bit of gas, so that would have been much better going into like more disruptors or uh, more high templar or something like that. But these are the types of things that you can, you know, take advantage of in these prolonged games. Like I said, the longer the game goes, the more their advantage, uh, or the less their advantage matters. And the more chances we give them to, to mess up. So now the game's like evening up quite a bit after that last fight. I still don't really want to be too aggressive. Because we're not, you know, in a hugely advantageous position. So it's better to use that defender's advantage as much as you can. And I say this as someone who likes to attack all the time. <laughs> so you know it's really bad uh, to be pushing in these positions. Especially with Terran specifically. Terran is the the type of race that does better in these end games, just sitting back in TVP these days. Okay, so he's coming in here with a big army. Army's actually really good against this, so I'm totally fine taking this fight. We just have to be careful of the disruptors. And I'd actually love to fight his army right now, if I could. The problem is that it's a little bit too choky, so what I wanted to try and do here was just break these middle rocks and then have a pretty nice concave to jump on him. So that's the plan right now. We're also finishing to develop that those tech units in our army. So we have a lot of Vikings if he goes Colossus. We have Ghost if he's playing High Templar or lots of gateway units. And the last thing we really need is a bunch of Liberators. That actually was also really, really good for us. I just need to make sure that in this position you don't panic and you don't look at the uh, the smaller picture. So you can see here I'm like splitting up my units, but I'm keeping the majority to the top because that's where his uh, main army is. All right, now we're maxed. We have all the tech units we want. We, you know, we got 3-3 on the way, range liberators. So at this point, I'm feeling more comfortable to start attacking because we've developed that army. So, you know, we were super behind, but now we've got a nice composition. We can start doing some stuff on the map. Maybe throw it on our fifth base pretty soon. And I'm just trying to find a nice place to fight him. So I don't want to fight him in the open. I want to have some choke points, actually, because uh, we have lots of liberators. So I'm just maneuvering here. Trying to get in between his army and a base is the goal. 
because I don't want to chase him. I want him to chase me. Now this fight doesn't go super perfect because I thought he would go <laughs> towards the right side. But he actually went to the left, so my Liberators are not actually participating. Um, but I can't really reposition them because they don't have enough uh, speed with Terran. So instead I'm just going to ignore that and focus on pulling back the bio. You can see here that only a very small portion of my bio is fighting. But that's actually enough to trade efficiently against Protoss. And so he still had to launch his disruptor shots. So if you're trying to fight with your whole army at once with Protoss in these situations against disruptors, that's a pretty massive mistake and that's going to make it almost impossible to, uh, to out micro Protoss. So you just want a very small portion fighting and a lot of it just pull back and hiding basically <laughs> from the disruptors. And yeah, so really big comeback game. I really uh, enjoyed this game <laughs> even though we made a ton of blunders and it was uh, fairly uncomfortable. It's, uh, it's always nice to have a sweet comeback. So hopefully you guys learned a lot from this game. I'll uh, keep the outro short. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.